Hey, folks, this is Teddy Burris. You're on Lunch Conversations with Randy and Teddy. Randy's not here just now, but that's okay. We'll get through without him. So Lunch Conversations with Randy and Teddy is sponsored by the Elder Law Firm, and we're grateful for their help. The Elder Law Firm can help you to keep your commitments to your loved ones. And so if you want, if you want any help or ideas or conversations about estate or elder care planning, reach out to the Elder Law Firm in Greensboro, North Carolina, 336-396-4551. Tebby, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I, absolutely fantastic, other than the fact that I missed the share screen button, but it's not the end of the world. So, um, uh, Tebby Albright, you are covering for Randy in his absence as he fulfills his requirements with Leadership Winston-Salem. Have you been a co-host before? I have not. Oh, so you're one of the, so, you know, the other, many others, once they do it, they then message me privately and they say, hey, Teddy, can I apply for Randy's job? <laughs> so let, let me know if you have that desire after we have, after the show, and maybe we'll talk about it. I was just going to say, be gentle since I'm a virgin <laughs> host. <laughs> so our special guest with us today is Teresa Rains, and Teresa's out of Cary, North Carolina, Teresa is a really interesting lady. She works for a company called Relias. Yep. And, and they're in Cary? They are headquartered. Yeah. And, and you're a solutions architect for them. I am. Fancy title, huh? Yeah. But that's not all about you. There's way more about you than, than simply, and it's not maybe simply, than being a solutions architect. Not only do you do, uh, I've worked in the training and staffing development world, but you are also a UNC grad and you were a springboard diver. I was. And then you went off and got, yeah, I can, I, is there, are there videos? That's what kind of before people had phones, you know, so like, oh, here, phones. <laughs> <laughs> so you couldn't really record. I've got some pictures. I was yeah. in the paper a few times. Yeah, yeah. So I carried around one of those big luggable VHS tape things. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I had one of those puppies on my shoulders when I had, when we had uh, young kids. Not for long, though. But um, then you went off and got your MBA at Indiana University. Yeah. One of the and, best uh, things I ever did. I learned so much, um, like what you can do with Excel and correlations and regressions was amazing. Marketing operations learned awesome stuff. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So tell us a little bit more about who you are and what you do today and just bump up against the big conversation that we're going to have about Renaissance. Well, sure. So, you know, like, most people, you, you know, had a career and like you said, in training and development, spent my entire career doing some form of education or training. I started working at the business school back in the day uh, before online learning was really a thing and had a chance to work on some of the early virtual courses that Keenan Flagler did, which was super fun. And then I had a chance to work with executive education, decided I wanted to move out into private industry away from academia. So I went to work for a company called Paradigm Learning, where we did uh, business games and simulations and, you know, was in sales. I've been in sales uh, for over 20 years too. So always selling training and solutions. And now I'm at Relias where I do demonstrations of our products. I do discovery calls with our clients, needs analysis and architect solutions. So fun stuff. Cool. Um, and, and, um, and how did we meet? Do you remember how we met? I do. So we met at a Piedmont Triad ATD chapter event. Yeah. And I used to travel back then. That was when I was at Paradigm. So I was driving around. I had North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee as territories. And so I love the Piedmont Triad chapters. Whenever I was kind of driving through there, I'd you know, stay overnight and attend your sessions and um, actually got a chance to try my hand at scribing there. Um, graphic facilitation where you draw pictures when people talk. I don't know if you were there when I won. I do remember that. That was that was a fun event. Yeah. Yeah, I, I won the throwdown trophy that year, 2015. 
Yeah, I, I remember that. That was a whole lot of fun. It was really, uh, for me, enjoyable. And I apologize, but I just realized Restream wasn't on. And now Restream is on and I should be broadcasting live. Randy, Randy would be shooting me right now uh, for <laughs> not having that working. So um, cool, cool. So um, Teresa, thanks for sharing. Hey, Tempe is going to be managing um, our chat. Tempe's going to be managing any conversations that you throw into the into us. And if we have a question you want to ask Teresa or Tempe or myself, use the chat box and drop those questions in and we will we'll bring them up when we can. So um, so let's 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 start the conversation, Teresa, about Renaissance and maybe yeah. more specifically about your Renaissance. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about your early years later on. Uh, but let's first of all, would you would you help us de define the word renaissance from your perspective? Well, so for me, it's kind of like a rebirth, um, you know, but it's also that renaissance man, woman type idea from I don't know what century that was, whenever, <laughs> you know, people could do all kinds of things and be a, all kinds of trades, painting, music. And so for me, it's kind of picking the art back up again and um, doing some of those things that I used to do when I was younger, uh, reconnecting with my inner child and um, having fun again. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. And I like that rebirth and reconnecting with our, our inner child. I mean, I get that. So um, LinkedIn says it's not online, but it's, I'm hoping it's coming. So we'll just keep going and we're taping. So, all right. I like that rebirth. It's important. It's something we need to do. And I apologize. I'm trying to get this back in front of me here. Um, and we should all be looking at that. Shouldn't we all be paying attention for those opportunities for that rebirth? I mean, I think it's so important. It's kind of that whole work-life balance. I mean, yeah. it'd be life would be boring if all you did was work, you know? And whenever my kids left the nest, my husband said to me, work cannot be your hobby. You have to have a hobby. And so I was like, well, I used to paint. I'll pick up painting again. And my work was offering this little screensaver contest. And I entered wow. that and I was like, okay, I'll do some art. And, you know, and it's one of those where you put yourself out there a little bit, um, you know, makes you just slightly nervous to show someone your work. I think that's always a really good feeling. It's kind of that where you're about to go outside of your comfort zone. And I encourage people to do it as much as possible because that's where you grow and that's where cool stuff happens. So here's what I entered. Um, and I won a big $50 for this. And then people would have it on their backgrounds before meeting. Um, I actually submitted two. So here was my other entry that they used in different um, campaigns online on LinkedIn to let people know about careers that were lives. Yeah. But but where did you discover for yourself that you liked doing that kind of art? Well, you know, when I was a little kid, I did art, too. So yeah. here's a little drawing. I want to go out of the way here. So this is me doing a drawing of a violet and a um, rainbow. You can't see the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and I had cut it up. And I numbered the back and I sent it to my grandmother who still lived in Sweden. I was in the United States at the time and told her to have fun with this puzzle. Well, I now do multi canvas murals and I number the murals on the back and they are because they're abstract. They can be like puzzles, too. So uh, it's just kind of funny that that's how I started. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, I like that. I remember you telling me that story. It was pretty cool. Um, and, and, and then talk a little bit more about what your husband said to you about work can't be your hobby. And, it's, and I think you said that told me that in context of becoming an empty nester. Yeah, I mean, at the time, I probably didn't have the best work-life balance. You know, I, sales, is, you are always working. You're never really off. When somebody has questions or wants to buy something, you're going to talk to them, whether that's 9 p.m. or you're on vacation. <laughs> Uh, so when the kids left the nest, he's like, no, you need a hobby. Uh, and so the art is great and it, and it's wonderful because it lets me tap into sort of that other part of my brain, left brain, left brain, right brain. And then also a little bit of like introversion, extroversion balance. So yeah. I get to put my thoughts into something instead of like 
you know, engaging with people. I'm on the phone all day. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I get it. I get it. Um, but art is the thing that it was. It was a core expression, or if something was been in a part of you for years, and you just found a way. Yeah. Yeah. What What year was this? Uh, this was probably eighty six. You know, so definitely dating myself here. But this is me. I see the eighties hair. <laughs> I know the big eighties hair. Um, I was at Mount Lebanon High School and um, outside of Pittsburgh, and I did my first mural. And you can't see the entire one, but it's a carnation, and it was about you know eight feet tall. And I did that because back then, I don't know if you remember, like they had those Valentine's Day carnations that you could buy for a dollar and give to mm. friends or people you liked or whatever. Well, yeah. I wanted to draw a carnation that everyone could could have all day, every day. Yeah, I get it. So here's a question for our audience. What is the hobby that you have for you today? Everybody drop in and even Dean, tell us, what, and we'll get to your question in a minute, Dean, but everybody drop in. What is your hobby that you have today that helps you distract yourself from that work day grind that we do? Uh, Tempe, what's your hobby that distracts you from that workday grind? I can with my dogs. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. Dean says writing social justice poems. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. You know, poetry was your favorite course in college, huh, Teresa? Yeah. Um, took way too much poetry. It's not necessarily great for launching a career, but it was fun. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> But, you know, um, look at that. Uh, Steve says music and golf. So, so Steve, you, you take the trombone out on the course? Maybe <laughs> not. Chan says he's an amateur radio hobbyist. That's pretty cool. Come on. Anybody else? What's your hobby? Debbie, Denise, Dulce, Jay-Z. What's your hobby? Tammy, Wayne, Yoga. volunteers. Yeah. Volunteering at animal shelters, exercise, me meditation, yoga. Yeah, I like those, Wayne. Todd, come on. What's your hobby? Dean tells jokes and does magic. Denise does crafts. Uh, Debbie does baking. I'm waiting for Todd Porter to jump in here. All right. So we all should have hobbies. My hobby is woodcraft. I'll go out and do some woodworking. Todd, Todd said I just showed up. So um, Don writes uh, inspirational and spontaneous uh, writing, inspirational, spontaneous new perspective writing. I like that. Todd gambles. Todd, that's not a hobby. <laughs> Maybe it is. I'm playing with you, Todd. So good. So good to hear. Everybody, everybody's got hobbies. Lots of us have hobbies. So um, to be able to juggle that our, our minds, and, and I use the phrase to distract me from the workday grind. I think it's important. So, um, so Teresa, um, you have a, a full-time job. Yeah. I'm assuming it's enjoyable and rewarding in lots of different ways. Yeah. No, I, I love my day job. It's really fulfilling, you know. I learn something new every day. And I, I like to joke that I get to use my superpowers at work. Yeah. Um, and my superpowers, I think that they're listening between the lines. I feel like I can hear what people are really wanting or needing, or if they're frustrated, something's challenging. And then also connecting the dots and helping people see the, those light bulbs go off like, oh, I get it now. Um, or yeah, all the ways that they could use our products and solutions. So it's fun. So you, you gotta you gotta spend a lot of time actively listening to the things that people say for you to figure out what it is they yep. really want. Yeah, but ask really good questions. Um, yeah, yeah, and that can wear you out. Yeah, no, I, I am tired at the end of the day. Um, if it's been a lot of calls or you know, and and I'm pulling stuff from different screens and I'm showing this and I'm sharing that and I'm listening. Uh, so yeah, I'm exhausted when it's all over and. It's, I'm kind of the same way with my art. Like I'll go, I'll, I'll go really big and work really hard for three months. And it's, you know, night after work in the morning before work, it's at my lunch break. Um, and then after I finish a big project, 
I take a break from the studio. I might not go back in there for three months just by, you know, because I'm that worn out. So um, balance. Now, you, it, it, you, you may not be willing to say now, but well, maybe, but what worn out is the more rewarding worn out? Um, the most rewarding worn out, I think, is when you go to the gym. So I'm with Wayne that was on the exercise, meditation, yoga. Like when you're yeah. physically tired, that is very rewarding versus mentally tired. I think um, and I think you need both. Um, and then you need to rest. Rest is super important. I, I get that. I get that. Yeah. I often think about my wife's, you know, every, every evening, not every, many evenings I'll go down. I, I try to stop before five o'clock. Most of the time I do stop before five o'clock and I'll start walking downstairs from my office, which is in the penthouse area of the home in my mind. Um, and I'll get down the bottom stairs. I go, Oh my God, I'm totally wore out. I'm spent. And, and more often than not, it's a good spent. I mean, I know I accomplished something of some meaningful value and I know that I created some value for somebody and, or move my business forward, move someone else's business forward. And I'm good with that kind of war out. I'm not good with the war out when I go, man, I didn't do a daggone thing. Uh, I'm with you. Tempe, do you ever get in this? Where do you see yourself? Do you ever see yourself in the, the day being totally spent and being grateful for that? Yes. yes, when um, when you feel like there was something accomplished. Now, if you feel that way and you're like a dog chasing its tail and you get, that is so frustrating and that's, you know, emotionally spent too yeah. on top of the mentally spent. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. So, so so you're building this do you use the word side hustle teresa side hustle here's here's me working and my actually my artistic process is very athletic too so like i work really big and stretching over stuff you know it's it's almost like like yoga ish or um so i can be pretty tired physically when i'm done with the art as well and I do get into flow with art, so I'll lose hours, you know, like, and I won't realize how much work I've done or, you know, how, how sore I am till the next day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I remember getting into that flow when I was writing my first book. You know, it, you know that, that story about, you know, you, you, you type in the title, Networking for Mutual Benefit, and then you sit there and try to figure out where you're going. And I remember, you know, I, I had my uh, outline. I knew where I wanted to go, but I remember trying to get the motion. But at one point I got going so well. I remember one night I worked till four o'clock in the morning. And my wife says, are you stupid or what? I'm like, baby, I couldn't stop. I mean, it was really real. And I tell you what, I wasn't wore out the next day but it was but it was so rewarding to see i got that flow going and it, it was really productive time yeah, that, that feels amazing um yeah. when you are able to tap into it and i can get there with excel too so <laughs> <laughs> google google uh, sheets is my my place today so um so tempe any questions you want to bring up well, you do have a question uh dean was asking what advice do you have for converting your hobbies into a side business, a side hustle. Yeah, well, uh, let's see here. So um, I don't know if you can see on this one, but um, I, I started building a website. So this was one of my first uh, website covers. And doing the business side of art was really time consuming. So last year, after I finished my last project, I said I told myself I couldn't do art again until I finished my website. And I had set up the ability to do like merchandise, you know, like cards and stuff so that I could get my art out there, not just the originals, but prints and stuff as well. And so, you know, that part is still the fledgling part. I do have commissions coming in. So I'll do a few big commissions every year. And that's where most of my money comes from. 
I'm not making a fortune by any stretch. And, you know, it's a good thing I got the day job to, <laughs> to bring in the money. But um, I'm working on it. Slow and steady wins the race. That's actually uh, one of my paintings. So if I stop sharing my virtual background, here's my real background. Um, and slow and steady is the little uh, snail over there. And it's kind of a personal reminder for me to... Uh, kind of slow down and like don't expect too much of myself i've always been kind of a dive right in and um maybe when i'm not even 100 percent ready like maybe i'm only 70 percent ready and have no idea what i'm doing and so the snail is kind of like a reminder otherwise i'm like this butterfly and i have a little add so i go from like idea to idea to idea and i like put me in coach come on let's go so that's what that uh, painting is called put me in coach yeah I'm with you. And there are times when that makes sense to be uh, flighty and a little ADD and, you know, put me in, put me in. And there's also times, as you and I talked about, there's also times where steady wins the race. You know, you can't just, on my terms, is not everything needs to be busted through like a bull in a china closet. Yeah. Well, and I mean, that goes for sales too. You know, my day job, um, you know, having been on the quota carrying side, you got to pick up the phone and call every day. You got to work those deals every day to to hit your numbers at the end of the year. And it is a marathon. You can't wear yourself out. Yeah. Um, pace yourself. Yeah, yeah. Keep keep moving forward. So, um, so, what was your thought process when your husband says you need a hobby, and then you said, "Wow, maybe this hobby could be a side hustle." What was your process about, you know, for in your, your thought processes about how far do I want to take this thing? I have a full-time job. I have a life as well, house and husband and family. And but I have this hobby, I want it to grow. And it could yeah. be a side hustle. What's your thought processes of, in that regards of how much you want to grow it? Well, I mean, so initially, I mean, it started with that background contest, but then my work also commissioned my first big piece. And they um, had me come in and look at the walls that they wanted me to put paintings on. And one of them was a 30 foot wall. Mm. And I said, well, can I have the whole wall? And they said, well, you can't paint on the wall because we're moving to a new headquarters. So you'll have to paint it on canvases and then you can put it on the wall. So that's how I fell into the whole idea of the multi canvas mural. And, you know, the property manager for Relias saw this work and wanted it for a different building, you know, something similar. So they commissioned more work. So all of a sudden I'm like, wait a minute, I can make money doing this. And when I first priced it, you know, I priced it just to kind of break even. And I, you know, I wasn't buying from the wholesalers. I didn't know, you know, that there were better places where I could buy my supplies. And so now I'm starting to really understand the money of it. And, you know, I recently filed to have like, sales and use tax because I'm selling merchandise as well and you know so it's getting there um, it's slow going but it's getting there but you got to balance yourself you can't you, you can't you know work one the day job so hard that you can't work the side hustle and vice yeah. versa but here's another one so this one's in a different lobby and it's got a it's got a friend and so this is called namaste so more for yoga. <laughs> um, there's actually a corresponding one on the other side of the hall that's blue and they're bowing to each other. This was during COVID. So yeah. this was kind of a, a little nod to COVID. And then here is a, a different one in another building. And that's the one where I first got my name in light. You know, so ah. like they put up a big plaque. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, real cool, real cool. So um, let me... Um... I want, I'm just going to go check LinkedIn. It still didn't go live. So I totally screwed up a restream today, but I'll figure that out. So, all right. So your business brand, your professional brand is Teresa the, um, and technology. You know, yeah. It's, uh, so I, on LinkedIn, I'm demo queen and artist. And when I first uh, owned that demo queen, that felt a little bit like, like braggadocious you know like but i'm gonna own it <laughs> um yeah. and as you, as you should yeah be bold you know go go for it 
Yeah. But you're having, you're, you, you're now starting to morph this professional brand that you're not just a demo queen, you're bringing in the artist perspective. Yeah. And so how are you balancing that branding activity, both, you know, on LinkedIn, as well as in life and other conversations? Yeah. So good question. Um, can I share my screen? Is that okay? Uh, yeah. If, if, let, me, let me give it to you. Okay. Because uh, then I can it? actually show everybody. Um, you should be able to, if you can't, let me see if I can fix that. Okay. Uh, not yet. But um, while you're doing that, um, on LinkedIn, you know, I try to post things about my day job as well as my art. And um, what's interesting, though, is the LinkedIn algorithm really likes my art more or maybe, you know, just maybe people like my art more than they like my work posts. Um, I think there's maybe a, a, both things going on there. Um, and so here, if we go to my LinkedIn page, you know, you see I'm posting about today that we're doing this and then I had somebody build me a logo and I was reflecting on some stuff where it's like I actually have the word train and art in my last name which is kind of cool and mm. I work at a company called Relias and that's like five out of six letters in my name which is I don't know it's like a psychological thing so check that post out but um I get some inspiration from art and I love yoga and just got back from Costa Rica. So I try to be, you know, a human, authentic. I have Sunday-itis, that's my dog. Um, and then here's my painting process. So I do a little bit of everything uh, when I post on LinkedIn. And another piece uh, here, I do what's called an artist walk. And these are very popular on LinkedIn, um, you know, really kind of drawing people in and explaining what the work's about. And having the captions is kind of important. And then doing some close-ups. Here's actually that story about the snail and the slow and steady wins the race. But then I've also got um, more yoga retreat because I do want to be a yogi someday. But here's me as a speaker for Relia. So I do also do a lot of webinars for our different products and work with our product managers. So I try to try to balance what I post. Yeah. yeah so you, you do have to balance it. I mean, Relias would probably be somewhat uh, disenchanted or... Uh, if uh, all of a sudden you only were an artist on uh, in in public view, so yeah, I, I so um, I have a pretty big network, but I'm also like connected to almost everybody at Relias, and we're uh, like almost 900 people now. So when when I first joined, we were 300. Now we're 900, so we've grown very fast, which is wonderful. Uh, it's been a great ride, but I, I did get people kind of commenting like, "Wow, you're on LinkedIn a lot!" Like. You know, but then they're also realizing that because and, and my daughter was a brand champion for Rockstar. So she and she said, like at Rockstar, they just wanted you to post pictures with the product and do what you normally do. And the fact that you had a big following and a big network on Insta was what they were interested in. And so if, when you do the research on LinkedIn, Relias posts, they don't get hardly any organic reach because LinkedIn wants them to pay. And the same thing if employees post about their employer, not a lot of organic reach there because it's like self-licking ice cream cone, you know, it's like you're just posting about your work or whatever. But when you post about your hobbies and like your actual self, LinkedIn loves it. Like when you get your promotions and that kind of stuff, that's what they want to see. And so you really got to mix it up. And so in order for me to be successful and promoting and amplifying Relias, I also have to amplify my personal brand. And, it, and I love that about LinkedIn. It lets you be who you really are. Yeah, I use the phrase, Teresa, uh, social media is a spot in our places for humans to have conversations with other humans. Yeah, and so I, so and I'm, I'm so with you. Like one of my, I hate it when people say it's just business, it's not personal. It is personal. Sales is personal. Business is personal. It's person to person, even when it's B2B. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, hey, now let me I'll do, let another me the, good question. Hang on, Tempe. Let me do the about okay. the half hour uh, spot. And I'm sharing my screen this time. Uh, so, Lunch Conversations with Randy and Teddy. We appreciate the elder law firm being our sponsor. Who's important to you and how do you uh, plan to honor your responsibilities to them? 
These are kinds of the kinds of questions that the elder law firm wants to help you answer so that you can do what matters for those that you're there to care for, whether it's elder care, estate planning, or any areas in that space. So reach out to the elder law firm in Greensboro, North Carolina, 336-396-4551 for your elder care conversations. And let them know that Teddy sent you to have a conversation with them. So Tempe, what um, what questions do you have in the in the chat box now? Well, Dean had a good question about how does learning about humanities and art relate to a technology career and skill? Oh, oh goodness! Yeah. <laughs> That's well, powerful. It's, so, you know, I'm always a little bit suspicious of people that have these really linear career paths where it's like, oh, I took these classes in school because I knew I was going to be in this career and like everything like just built like perfect little Lego building blocks. Um, you know, like it kind of goes with the whole Renaissance idea. Like I liked doing a little bit of everything and I've never been really good at staying inside of my sandbox. And I have more fun when I get to kind of make everything fit together and creating solutions for clients, even though it's different products and services and features, is a very creative process. So you're, you're listening to them, you're understanding their needs, and then you're coming up with a solution that is customized for them. And that's a very creative process. So I, I do think they're synergistic. I do think you need the, the, the right brain and the left brain to, to come together with some of these solutions. Now I will admit on the technical side, it made me nervous. Like when you're talking web services, API integrations, those things used to make me nervous. And I did have to study up there um, when I got promoted into this role as a solutions architect, because I did have to get more technical. Yeah, yeah, but I'm with you. I, I um, uh, e even reading good autobiographies, reading good novels and you know reading about history, I've discovered that there are lots of different topics and conversations that are, going on, that are going on that are not all about a hammer and chisel business, not all about, you know, uh, work that really help me yeah. to look at the things that I'm involved in in a different light. Yeah, I totally agree. And I've gone through phases. So I think that's one of the things that I, I do too is so when I was a traveling salesperson, I went had my driving territory. I used to listen to audiobooks and I felt so smart because I had read all the latest business books. Um, and lately I've kind of taken a break from books. Uh, although I've listened to a little bit of fiction. Um, I don't know if anyone's heard of Ladies Number One Detective Agency, but that series got me through COVID because it's just really relaxed and like low stress. Um, and so listening to having somebody read that to you is just wonderful. But I also started working in my garden a couple years ago, lifting heavy stones and, and doing retaining walls and that physical work and then planting flowers, seeing things grow was just another way to kind of reduce some stress during COVID. So I'm, I get you. So Tampi, do you have a good question in the chat box? Yes. Uh, Donald asks, when you're completing the piece for a corporate placement, how do you address the fact that art is very personal and what one person likes, another person totally dislikes? That is a great question. So I, I do talk to them about my process. And, and so far, I've been lucky that they trust my vision. So I do have the real estate property manager go into the space with me. We look at the space together. I ask for their ideas um, and what they're looking for. And in both cases, they had seen my prior work. So they wanted something similar. And the one behind me, for example, they wanted pop of color. It was a, a very um, like monochromatic corporate cold environment so here you kind of see what it looked like before and it needed that color and I got all excited about doing some really bright colorful two-story stuff but I, I'm going to show you all three of them and I'm going to tell you what happened so the property manager had a boss she's the one who pays the money and when she saw this she said it's not abstract enough we were thinking it was going to be abstract so I was like, crap, am I going to lose this deal? Like, I've done all this work, and I was so excited to have it installed. 
Um, but then I showed them like, I actually took all 36 canvases in. So these are all, they're 16 feet tall, so they're very big. And I laid them out for them to look at. And I encouraged them to get up close because even though it looks like a mountain with trees or a, a tree or the ocean, when you get up close, they're abstract because um, fish don't look like that. And trees don't look, they don't have top hats. And, you know, like I, I made them whimsical and fun. And so they, they kind of like, yeah, okay, we get it. And then they put it up and the response has been really positive. So it's yeah. been wonderful. Yeah. And often isn't it the case though, or, um, and, and we'll talk about this in a minute, maybe, you know, when you're doing corporate spaces and big public spaces, you, you got millions of critics that either love it or don't get it or don't like it. But it's a little terrifying. You're putting yourself out there. But I, I do go visit my art. Um, they're close enough that I can go have lunch with them sometimes. And I do see the people that work there and um, they'll say, hey, are you the artist? And I'm like, yeah, it's me. And they'll tell me like what it meant to them. Or, um, you know, I had one woman when actually when I was working on this mountain series in my home, it was laid out in my living room and it was our, you know, the cleaning lady. And, and she came in and she saw it and she started to cry. She's like, oh my gosh, it just reminds me of my mother. Um, and like, I was so moved. Um, it was awesome. Um, and so like to be able to have that kind of an impact on people is just super cool. And then I, I you saw the video on my LinkedIn of this piece. Um, I went in to visit it one day and one of the people who works there says her six-year-old daughter came to work with her and was just amazed at the art. And she's an artist she wants to be an artist yeah. and so I gave them a Christmas tree ornament of this painting to give to her daughter um, just to kind of encourage her to keep going yeah. so it's been kind of cool to, um, yeah and and um Teresa I can I wait I would imagine that the comments that you hear the the way people express to you how your art impacts them impacts your next project it does. Absolutely. I mean, I, part of what I get really excited about and why I like doing corporate commissions is I want to give the employees something special at work, mm -hmm. you know, so the, the most recent project that I have just completed is this one and it's called synergy and it's about sales and growth. So if you see the yellow circles are going up. That's the growth of Relias. And those flowers are our products and services. And our portfolio has expanded over the years. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it has a meaning for Relias specifically. It's Relias colors. And actually, our head of sales is over here. He's the king of sales. I don't know if you can see he's got a crown. And he's the one who's starting to throw this little ball that becomes a flower. And it becomes the moon, the stars, and um, the sun. So it's um, very, very specific to the customers that I'm working with. Yeah, I would wager every conversation um, has some impact on that next process, that next thought process, and that next, yeah. uh, the next product, a project you do. So, um, Tempe, questions? And uh, yes, you got one on uh, uh, cancel culture going on. How do you deal with that? Ooh. Um, so cancel culture makes me a little nervous. Yeah. Um, and I'm very careful about what I post online as a result. Um, so I am being authentic, but I'm also um, sort of recognizing what's going on in the environment and just not, I'm not going to touch the touchy subjects. <laughs> um, it's just fraught with peril. And, and in my art, I try to kind of, it, it'll be more about art and nature and employee engagement and like making people excited, giving them some energy is, is kind of the whole idea of some infusion of color. Um, and this piece actually was commissioned to encourage people to come back to work. You know, so with COVID, people aren't wanting to come back to work. Um, it's like now they have, they have to buy you lunch and they have to have special fun things to do and like make the environment even better. We've got yoga classes at work, you know, like stuff to make you want to come in. Yeah. But yeah, yeah stay I'm away from you. stuff. 
Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, there's a time where it's important to have a conversation about the touchy stuff, but not yeah. everything we do does not have to address the touchy stuff. Well, I, I'll share a piece here. And this one has, um, so this one right here, I'm going to step out. Um, um, this one is about and the environment and how we as humans are the problem and the solution. Mm -hmm. And so the, the caution there is like, hey, we're at a tipping point and those are bottle caps with expiration dates. There's duct tapes and um, uh, zip ties holding that thing together. Now that one I didn't do for a company. This one I did for a contest um, where I could have won money or whatever. I didn't get in. But I'm going to keep trying. I, this is my third time entering. So, you know, I'm going to keep going till I get in there. Yeah, and, and again, as a human, we should be able to express ourselves in lots of different ways. And at some point, that's going to touch on the touchy stuff. Yeah. And, and, and that's OK when that's the right when that's the right time to do that. So yeah, yeah, this one was a better venue for that. And this one is kind of like, we owe it to the children. So there's an IOU over there, but it, it's also optimistic. It's like, I can, and you can, we, we can make a difference. We can turn this around. So. Yeah, yeah real good. So, all right, here, uh, Tempe, by the way, get ready. Cause when we get uh, uh, closer to the end of the show, you and I have to tell a couple stories. Okay. So. Your renaissance continues, Teresa. And I think that for any of us who truly want to keep enjoying life, um, we, not, we need to constantly be changing. We need to constantly be looking for those changes that, that, that can take us in a, another space. I talked to, a, oh, shoot, who was it? Um, oh, a good friend of mine, local guy, um, um, Brian Wright. Tempe, I think, knows who he is. Ryan Wright left corporate America and is now teaching people how to drive race cars. You know, he's, uh, he's building uh, race cars in his own style. And I messaged him the other day because he got a brand new job as an instructor driving race cars. And maybe they're not race cars like, you know, uh, uh, what's it called? The um, um, Carolina, what's a what NASCAR? The Formula One. Yeah, they're not Formula One. They're not NASCAR. They're just racing cars. But my point I shared with him is, man, I love watching your journey. You had a blast in corporate America. You made a huge impact when you were involved in a nonprofit in the triad. And for the last five or six or seven years, you're, you are changing into something way different. He said uh, he's having the time of his life. So we all need to be keep, have, keep looking for what's our next change. And, you know, D Don and I are the same generation, maybe a slightly ahead of, you know, Teresa and Tempe's generation. And I think, and Don, I'm speaking for you with wondering what your thoughts are. We, even as we m uh, move into retirement, we need to be asking ourselves, what's our next change? Where am I going to go have fun? Well, I, I got to chime in here because that's, um, I, I got some health information last year that, you know, made me realize I need to do everything possible now while I can health as well, you know, and, and traveling and hiking and doing the things that I want to do requires stamina and physical strength. And so it's like, I got to, so now I'm planning out my vacations years in advance because I've got FOMO. I don't want to miss out on anything. And the same thing with the art, you know, it's like go big or go home. I'm going big on the art too. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So keep that renaissance going. And, you know, as you said, you know, you, you, you've got a, you got a alert to be better with health. And so how now you're, you're more in tune with health and you're also looking at a, another adjustment in your life to be more involved in yoga. Yeah. You know, oh, I'm so excited. Wellness. Yeah. Um, I want to go to those. Uh, I want to go back to Costa Rica and do a three week teacher retreat. Um, where you, where I can become a yoga instructor. Yeah. And I also want to do like meditation and Tai Chi. So um, that will be part of my career as well. Again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you all these questions and having this conversation to remind all of us that none of us should stop looking for that next change. Yeah. Uh, 
I, I won't say names or relationships, but I know people who are absolutely content with at the end of the day to come home, walk up to the Barca lounger and say, hey, buddy, it's you and me for the next six hours. No. <laughs> No, no, that's not me either. So um, now, I, I will admit when I'm both physically and, and mentally tired, uh, watching a little Mrs. Maisel or Billions, you know, is, is a good way to, you know, just kind of take a little break sometimes. Yeah, I'm with you. I, 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 I agree. So, um, but we only get one ride. We need to make yeah. the most out of this ride. And the one way to make the most out of this ride is to constantly be seeking that thing that we truly want to do that gives us the greatest rewards. Yeah. yeah so, well, good stuff. Good stuff. Teresa, um, two or three tips, two or three statements that you could share with the audience about Renaissance that you think is important for the audience to take away from this conversation. You know, just figure out what makes you happy. What is it that you really enjoy? What makes you want to get up in the morning and do more of that? Make time for it. It's so easy to get busy and caught up in the to-do list. But like at the end of the day, does that really give you satisfaction? You know, make sure you spend time on the stuff that's going to make you happy. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Good stuff. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, sure. Happy to be here. Yeah, I really appreciate it. All right, Tempe. Um, uh, here, let's, throw, let's bring out Don. Don says, don't retire in the traditional sense. Plan your next big adventure. Yeah, the one you have been preparing and training for your entire life. Look at this philosophical dude jumping in here for solid points. Yeah, I'm with you, buddy. I'm with you all the way. So, uh, Tempe, do you, do you have a story for us? Well, listening to, um, to this, and you know, we just I'm just now recovering over the March Madness. Um, the Carolina team uh, changed when Hubert Davis told the team, "Find your joy, mm -hmm. find your joy playing with each other." And when I read that he said that, I thought that was awesome. I, I, I was using fine joy in everything. And working at Goodwill, uh, a lot of the people that we deal with um, do not realize what all they have to offer. And people tend to, and Teresa uh, did it too when she was first going into art. She was just, you know, asking for a, the price that was, you know, even. Yeah. She wouldn't have given herself enough credit for what she has to offer. And a lot of times when people have things that come easy to them and they enjoy, they, they don't realize that that is what you really need to play up. So, yeah. That's yeah. what I got. I'm with you. I'm with you. Often we take uh, our skills for granted. And they just go, oh, it's just something I know how to do. And, and the reality is often something that you are really good at because you just, and you just do it second nature. Someone else looks at you and goes, oh my God, how did you do that? And it's, uh, it's amazing to some people to look at what we do that we, again, think is just, ah, no big deal. I've been doing it all my life. Um, I'm trying to think of something in my regard that I have, but, uh, uh, and I know I, we all have those and, and, and it's important not to take our skills for granted. Yeah. So cool stuff. Um, Tempe, thank you very much for joining us this week. I appreciate you. So, thank you. um, so here's, um, here's my story. I worked for corporate America for 35 years. And I, I bought a boatload of wedding dresses and prom dresses and, uh, you know, other things for four daughters and you know, helped put four daughters through school going to corporate America. And I was good at what I was doing. I was in technology as well, Teresa, and, and I was in sales. My, my last five years, I was in sales. Before that, I was in operations for technology. And, and, I, and I enjoyed what I do because... I was good at it. At least I believed I was good at it. And look, I didn't say in my mind this time, Teresa. 
Um, but but I don't think that that really, I know that really was not my real calling. And I had to figure out what my real calling was. And so I went on a journey to figure out what my real calling is. And I discovered what it is. And it was a skill. There are a set of skills that I've had for many, many years, speaking, running my mouth. I love to run my mouth. Well, guess what? You can get paid for running your mouth. You can get paid well for running your mouth if you talk about something that makes sense that's important to someone else. Social media. I loved playing on LinkedIn or, or, or Facebook and Twitter uh, and blogging. I loved doing that stuff. It was a lot of fun. Guess what? I discovered I can make money doing that. And then training people, helping people figure out how to do something. You know, that, that, that led me to discover that I can be a coach, a trainer, a consultant, a strategy. And I put it all together and look at today. I have, I'm for the last 12 years, I've been a social media strategist. All because of stuff that I love to do. I have to manage it. I can't be addicted to it. But when you discover what you truly want to do and you find people who want you to do it for you, that's magic. And just as you said, Teresa, you might be spent and wore out and, you know, fall asleep early, but it's a, it's a good feeling because it, it was rewarding. Well, and Teddy, I have to say, um, hearing your presentation about LinkedIn back at that ATD seminar mm -hmm. has helped me and I follow your posts and I see, you know, all the tips and tricks you're giving us to get better at LinkedIn. So I appreciate that. Well, thank, thank you. So and for me, it's fun to see people who take, you know, a little bit of my knowledge and a lot of their exper experimentation and go have fun. That is rewarding for me when I you know, when I see people doing something brand new, and again, I may have had that much to do with it, but by golly, I had that much to do with it. Yeah, uh, well, I just did my cover video today. Woo, woo. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, good stuff. Look, we're going to wrap up a little bit early today. Um, but Teresa, again, I really appreciate you showing up. I look forward to seeing more of your art, more of your creativity shine. Uh, and if we can help you out in any way, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Appreciate you very much. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. This is fun. Yeah. And, and Tempe, thank you very much. Did you just, did I, did, did I see in the chat that you're looking for the application to, to I don't know if I saw that in the chat or not. <laughs> to Are be the permanent. <laughs> yeah, to take, take Randy's job. Or do you want to talk about that offline? I was well, trying Teddy, not to you know, share it with everybody. I'll raise my hand for that one. <laughs> You know, the moment I, uh, when I start doing my trend, uh, my, uh, not be here, Randy's going to start courting people to replace me too. So, but, all right, well, cool stuff. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. Our special guest for next week. Oh, Lordy, where's our special guest for next week? Uh, I was supposed to have that right in front of me here, and I don't. So, uh, lunch with Randy and Teddy next week is our anniversary show. So this is going to be fun. I'm going to be in Gatlinburg or someplace else, but I'm dialing in, dialing in. I'll be here for the anniversary show. We've reached out to the audience and we've found six or seven people who are going to join us on the anniversary show. We're going to talk about all kinds of things. We're going to talk about maybe some, who were some of our, you know, our stellar special guests. We'll talk about some nuggets that people got from our shows that might be helpful. No, Dean, we're not firing Randy. Um, and D Dean commented, is Randy getting fired? Um, we're, we're, it's our anniversary show. Our second anniversary show is next week. Uh, and so please join us on the anniversary show. We're gonna be promoting this even more and love to have everybody show up. Is there gonna be share. virtual cake? Virtual cake? Oh, Lordy, I forgot about a cake. <laughs> I got to go get a cake now. Thanks, Teresa. <laughs> so, but anyway, that's our anniversary show next week, uh, every Wednesday, 11.55 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, um, yeah, Dean, maybe we'll have some candles as well. So, uh, anyway, we're appreciative of the uh, Elder Law Firm being a sponsor for us. Love them helping us out. If you know anybody else who would like to help make this show grow, please let, it, uh, let us know who we should talk to. We appreciate it. 
So you guys have an absolutely fantastic week. We'll see you later. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.